This episode of the Closeout Bodyboarding Podcast is proudly presented by Bodyboarding Victoria and Function Bodyboards. Check out the all-new range of Function Boards, including the Joe Clark, Chase O'Leary and Bradstone models at your local bodyboarding or surf specialist store or online at www.function.com. Now, back to the crew in the studio. Welcome to the Close Out Bodyboarding Podcast, a podcast where three good mates sit down to talk about all things bodyboarding. I am joined, as per usual, by my two really good mates, Shane Britton, Chris Watson. Good to have you back, fellas. Thanks, Ben. Good to see you. Thank you, Benny. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Obviously, we've just released uh, three podcasts onto our platform, giving everyone a bit of a background on who we all are. Uh, this episode, however, folks, just a bit of a general public catch up. We're just going to have a chat, talk about some current topics and go from there. Yeah, we're actually gathered for a bit of a, an auspicious occasion. Uh, it's not very often you get to see uh, the death of a man's youth in, re- in real time. <laughs> but today uh, is Benny Oborn's 40th birthday. <laughs> so, it's, uh, it's really good. We're actually having a bit of a do uh, tomorrow night and a uh, few people flying in. And uh, we thought we'd do a bit of a podcast and do a bit of a catch up and actually talk about just normal bodyboarding stuff. We've got a heap of interviews sort of already pre-recorded uh, for our next few episodes, but um, this one we just thought we'd dive into a few different topics and, and have a chat. I don't know if I looked, you know, towards my 40th birthday and thought, you know, what am I going to do? <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd definitely recording, a, pod- record a, podcast. <laughs> recording <laughs> a podcast probably wasn't at the top of the list, but here we are. <laughs> is, <laughs> is this your midlife crisis here? thought, you know what? I've always wanted to do a podcast. Let's do it. That's what I, I definitely was thinking that when I was sitting on the uh, ferry coming across the heads in the belting down <laughs> rain this afternoon. Yep. Yeah, weather hasn't been nice today. Oh, if we do have uh, any noise in the background, it's because we're in the 50-year storm in Victoria. <laughs> Bells Beach it must, be, must be huge today. So, uh, it's, look, it's looking pretty good out there. Peter Phelps is on the beach. Oh, yeah. I, I tell you what, like yesterday, guys, was complete opposite. Obviously, the swell was big, yeah. but down my end of the coast, it was – Oil slick, like offshore, like it was so clean. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, we had the perfect weekend last weekend. It was twenty five degrees down here, nor'east winds, Look, surf pumping, absolutely. This weekend, weather, yep. friends rolling in on planes, and it's flights uh, cancelled. It's ten degrees, <laughs> <laughs> hailing onshore, and it's the fifty year storm. I know. I think Perisher announced a week ago they were going to shut early because it was too warm. Yeah. Shut last weekend. Yeah. Yep. And might, now have, might have jumped the gun. Yeah, yeah. crazy. Now there's <laughs> snow on Lake Mountain today, apparently, <laughs> and a few of the other places as well. So, I, I was in Dubai last week and it was 42 degrees and I got off the plane and in Melbourne and it was 7 degrees. Yeah. It was a bit of a culture wow. shock. I guess, yeah. Probably the first thing I wanted to kind of chat about <clears throat> with, with you guys is probably just about the uh, general launch of our, of our podcast. Um, Has your life changed yet? <laughs> um, yeah, you turned 40. <laughs> I'll get back to you on that. Um, I mean, I have had a lot of missed calls from strange numbers. Not sure if that's, um, you know. International numbers. Yeah. So, yeah I'll yeah, get a few yeah. of those myself. Yep. Yep. Yeah. The ATO still leave me weird text messages. But- <laughs> I've got to buy some iTunes gift cards or something <laughs> yeah. to settle my debt. Yeah, I'll get them too. Um, but first of all, thank you to everyone out there in the podcast world that has listened or downloaded our first few episodes. Really appreciate your support. Um, so far, the feedback's been pretty good, which is quite, I guess, overwhelming for me. That's for yeah, sure. I've had a bit of negative in my, in my household. <laughs> <laughs> my, my daughter berated me for not talking about her enough <laughs> and uh, getting her age wrong, which I think at the time oh, no. we actually recorded the podcast was correct, but now <laughs> it's incorrect. <laughs> and it's been, I think it's a four months gap between recording and release. So, uh, shout out to Kyla. Go. Yeah. Hello, Kyla. <laughs> um, love you very much. And uh, she's 17 in year 12 high school. I, that's all I can say. <laughs> I hope I covered all the topics. Yeah. <laughs> she actually wants to be invited on. I said, you don't bodyboard. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd be concerned. She said, I'd love to talk about how I don't bodyboard. <laughs> I said, wow. <laughs> that could what, be an interesting perspective. <laughs> what, what about you, Chris? Back at home, how's Courtney feel about your newfound stardom? I tell you what's very interesting, right? As I think we've talked about, I don't think we've talked about it on a podcast, but those who know me know that Courtney 
He's very. Uh, we we talked about my dad being like low key on the feedback. My wife's worse. <laughs> I remember I've like rang up Courtney before and said, oh, guess what, honey? I want a state titles. You know, I was the first one in 20 years. And she's like, that's nice. Um, What's yeah. for dinner? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I said to her the other day, I said, have you listened to our podcast yet? She's like, no. Nope. <laughs> and I asked her again tonight. I said, have you listened? She's like, no. Nope. <laughs> and I'm like, wow. Okay. I think that's positive feedback. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was, she goes, you wouldn't even talk about me anyway. I said, you'll have to listen. Oh, wow. <laughs> So, uh, the one one thing, though, after uh, what? I've been the president of Bodyboarding Vic for two years, almost three years, I think. Somewhere there. I saw her, like, the last couple of weeks, she's been, uh, she's had a crook back and um, she's been at home a bit and just cruising around in hoodies. And still hasn't found the ta- time to listen to the potty. <laughs> yeah, hasn't found, the, ha- hasn't found the time to listen to the potty, but she's managed to find a Bodyboarding Vic top which she's the member of and she's been wearing that hoodie i'm like well you know support one of the things in my life to start with we'll we'll get there (laughs) well i mean something must have changed because when shana and i called you this afternoon to remind you we were recording this potty i mean you you were basically jumping out of your seat with excitement (laughs) (laughs) courtney said to me when you guys rang me this afternoon she's like ben didn't ask what you're wearing (laughs) That's a bit strange. <laughs> he normally does. <laughs> That's my joke. You've stolen my joke. <laughs> so, anyway. But, but the rest of the family support, I know uh, I, I know Dad's listened to it. I know most of my family's listened to it. Sam in uh, production. Uh, I, it was funny. I was talking to Sam about it. And he's like, yeah, well, when I, I, when I edited the first one, he's like, I listened to bits and pieces, but never the whole thing. Yeah, and I'm right. like, yeah, that makes sense, actually. We do have to give a real big thank you to your brother, Stan Watson, uh, as well as Michael Jennings and my brother, Mark Britton. They've been helping so much in the background, setting up all the accounts and uh, all that sort of stuff and social media and everything and editing. And so, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely. not just the three of us, it's a, it's a big team behind us. And- I, I tell you what, we just talk in front of a microphone, those guys are the stars. <laughs> they they, they, all they, they make it sound good. Yeah. <laughs> and they're a lot more picky on audio than we are. <laughs> I'll listen to it and it sounds good. And then uh, and then you hear Jennings and, and Sam, and they're like, what about that little market? Da, 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 da. And I'm like, well, settle down, boys. Oh, geez. <laughs> yep. But um, yeah, definitely a shout out to, to all of those guys. Obviously, we've got the website up and running now, www.thecloseout dot com dot au and also our own facebook and instagram page finally all set up and ready to go and launched and uh we've got quite a few episodes already ready to go we won't say who they are because it'll be more of a surprise as we as we roll them out we just got to get the tiktok up and running TikTok. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no more socials. <laughs> oh, God. Um, <clears throat> so i mean like i said bit of a catch-up episode been quite a while since the three of us have all sat down at the same table. Um, a lot's happened. Um, probably the most recent is the Australian National Bodyboarding titles recently wrapped up uh, in New South Wales. Chris Watson, you were there. Give us a report, mate. Nationals every year. I love going to nationals because you, it's like a family reunion. And uh, you go to nationals and you catch up with a heap of people you've met over the last you know 30 odd years. And I had, I can't remember who it was I was surfing with, and he goes, uh, he goes to me, what I, some things never change. I said, what do you mean? And he goes, 30 years ago, you and I were surfing together in nationals. I said, oh, yeah. And he goes, we've still got Tez and McKenna pulling <laughs> on the beach. We've got Haddo as a head judge, and they're still playing the same music. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah, you're right, actually. <laughs> So, um, no, Nationals is always um, – I I just love everyone getting behind each other. So, this year we had um, Nath, Clayton in the over, uh, Nath Clark in the over 45s. Um, we had Benny Roberts. Um, had Ryan in uh, Masters and Open, Ryan Jucker. Uh, he, his wife, Windle, in the women's. We had Trav in the Open uh, and we had Tully. Uh, as well in the junior divisions and I surfed as well. You know, I pushed to get as many spots as we possibly could and um, we applied for as many wild cards as we could because we had people that were interested and we've, uh, in the past, we've had been a little bit low on spots. Like we, we have a pretty small team this this year. We had the biggest team we've had for Vico. 
So, um, no, it was great. And, uh, you know, the first couple of days we were up there, we thought we were, we'd been diddled with waves. Um, Nath. Diddled. That's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a new one for me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll show you how that works later. <laughs> uh, I um, just also would like to throw a shout out to Qantas for, um, you know, losing my board bag. That's um, why old mate got fired this week. Isn't it? Oh, yeah. Old Joycey got fired because, you know, uh, they did pretty well. I lost my bag. They lost my bag on the way there and the way back. So um, Not bad. Yeah. The one, the and you're, you're an air tag guy as well, right? So, yes. you, you love nothing more than just tracking your belongings for fun. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's just I don't trust Joycey. <laughs> but um, the boys flew Bonza. Mark and Nate flew Bonza. Yeah. And they had a- They had a really good flight. Really good flight. And it was on time and all the rest of it. Mine got delayed. I lost my luggage and- Both ways. Both ways. And I've only flown with Qantas for the last, I don't know, 14 years. And, and you're now, a gold member. <laughs> nah, platinum. <laughs> <laughs> got a lifetime gold membership. And, anyway. but what, um, What's really exciting for me about this conversation is we're incredibly in influential in the investment kind of uh, industry yeah. that Qantas stocks are about to drop. Yeah, so, well, buy now. Joycey was actually ringing and wanted to sponsor the podcast. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I heard he's got a spare 10 or so million bucks that he's just on the side here. <laughs> but um, no, nah, back to Nationals in Port Mac. Um, Surf look good. Yeah. So, like I said, when we first went there, the first two days were tiny. And um, being uh, a Victorian who'd been surfing in the pool quite a bit beforehand, and the pool was uh, eight, ten degrees, I get to Port Mac and I'm like, oh my Cooking. God. I surfed in board shorts three times at Port Mac. I'm like, this is beautiful. And um, yeah, first two days were like two foot, not even. We we're groveling on a shore break. And the first day we actually surfed where the gentleman, the week after we left, got a shark. Like shark. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> there was a lot going on that week, like with, I guess, animal life. Like, you, we were surfing Lighthouse, and me and Mark were surfing Lighthouse, and probably me to you away, Benny. Dolphins going past, like, mm. flat out. And then there was, you'd look out the back, and there was, like, whales breaching all the time, and it's just stuff you don't see that common. So, but, um, yeah. yeah. Well, it, definitely, if you're surfing a pool, mate, of course, you're not yeah, going to see whales. I was up Byron a couple of weeks ago and had the same thing, like, heaps <clears> of wildlife, but the water's so warm. Oh, it, it's unbelievably warm. Yeah. And, um, yeah, we got got some good waves. Um, for the comp, like the first day of the comp, we had Lighthouse at probably two foot, two to three foot, which was uh, competitive. And, yeah, it was quite good. And the second two days down at North Haven was sick, like really good waves. And it stayed good pretty much most of the day. Um, they made the choice on the last day to uh, start early and then um, – finish early which was really good because the wind came in in the last couple of heats like by the time the open final came in and it was starting to get like that wind came up and the, the chop was there but like when you walk down to north haven in the morning you just see the light behind like the glassy waves it's just it was epic so there was some <clears throat> amazing surfing um big shout out to the uh the grommets like all the junior divisions my god they were ripping like, there was some big moves there. You're watching, like, a kid that's 40 kilos just do big, like, full rotation extended rolls and stuff like that. Um, be sick. That's, a, that's a good good sign of progressive health of the sport. Yeah. One of my favourite parts was the fact that one of the local Groms, he was a Port Mac Grom, and uh, the, the old parents had pulled the kids out of school and they're there in their uniform cheering on this kid. And I'm like, how good is that? Like, he's in his final... And there's there's all the crew on the beach just shouting and screaming and stuff like that. And yeah, if you've if you've never been to nationals, it's really exciting to meet with everyone else and and just catch up with people. Like we had, uh, you know, caught up with a heap of crew and surf with a heap of crew that you, you see once a year. But like everyone getting behind each other is really good. And you know, I, I'm always proud to watch our team. Well, it's you know, kind of unique now with nationals. It's a three day event, and yeah, which you're not getting really anywhere else so and such a large crew of bodyboarders all together yeah absolutely and that that festival goes for uh i think it's 21 days of all sorts of different disciplines and um you know they've got the para uh they've got the long boards the loggers the short boards well mate can we can we quickly on that topic talk about the australian para surfing champions yeah absolutely uh, obviously something quite relative to to our sport 
Joel Joel Taylor. Mm. So take, taking out congrats, Joel. Taking out that division, um, for those that aren't aware of Joel Taylor, I'm sure 99.9% of bodyboarders, Joel Taylor is the man behind Unite Clothing. Um, he formed that that clothing label, gosh, couldn't even tell you how many years ago. Probably f- at least 15, yeah. I think. Yeah. Mm. Um, Joel, yeah, unfortunately had a career-ending um, bodyboarding accident in Hawaii. Um, yeah, still kind of probably very clear in a lot of people's minds. And that was his first national title, wasn't it? It was. It yeah. was, yeah. 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 Huge. Um, yeah. No, that was awesome. So, yeah, big shout out to, to Joel Taylor, mate. I'm sure I speak on behalf of thousands, if yeah. not more people, I saw mate. I McKenna's post. He was stoked as well. And, yeah, it's all yeah really positive seeing that. Yeah. So, mate, super proud of you, Joel. Keep it, it up, is, buddy. It's actually a really good clip uh, online on the Riptide so I'm not sure if it's in their social media or on their website. Or the communi- community page, maybe. Yeah, where it just shows a, a heap of his surfing uh, right now, and he's, he's surfing amazing. Yeah. Um, and you can just see the, the bodyboarding aesthetic he's bringing. It's, yeah, it's, I, I recommend everyone getting on the Riptide socials and, and finding that. Yeah, that was that was a massive highlight. It would have been uh, – we would have loved to be down there for that, but that was, that was epic to see him uh, get that that through um the other big highlight the other big highlight was nathan clark oh our good mate nath so bit of a backstory nathan clark's originally from port mac and his parents live up there and his brother and uh shout out to Stu from uh dutton coffee for uh hooking us up for his airbnb for the uh the week and uh we we stayed there but um yeah nath uh the last couple of years, he's sort of, uh, I think he won Open last year uh, for the state titles in Vico. Yep. Um, you know, smooth surfer and all the rest of it. And he, he got all the way to the finals. And Nate's parents were on the beach for every one of his heats. Um, shout out to uh, Coral and Chubbs, um, best people. We were sitting there on the, on the beach and... You know, Coral's got the little esky out with the fruit, and which you guys like some apples and stuff <laughs> like that. It was awesome, and um, yeah, in the final, uh, we sort of watching life eats the whole way through as you do, and um, Nath was down the whole final, and he probably needed one more wave. We're in the last thirty seconds. We're looking, and I think he needed like a six five or something like that, and um, with fifteen seconds to go, he takes off. And, genuine uh, buzzer beater. Genuine yep. buzzer beater, and um, they called it on the. They they called that. Oh, it looks like that the uh, the other gentleman was going to come first, and um, Nath gets this wave, and the scores didn't drop till after the hooter, and uh, he got a barrel and then two rolls. Yeah, yeah. and um, as soon as he got that wave, shout out to uh, a picky old Clayton Picksworth. He yeah. was running like down the beach and. Um, yeah, Nath, Nath landed the wave, came in, and I'm like, I reckon he's got it, I reckon he's got it. We're looking, we're looking, we're looking, and all of a sudden they announced it. And, um, oh, epic feeling, like the whole Vico team was running down the beach. Like The footage is pretty incredible. <laughs> everyone <laughs> running down and jumping on him. Yeah, so everyone run down, jumped on him, and um, funny funny backstory to that. So uh, old Chubbs as. 30 seconds left. He's like, all right, Carl, I'll start cleaning up a bit. Yeah, so Chubbs is, is Nathan's dad. <laughs> Nathan's old man. And so Chubbs, Chubbs goes and starts putting stuff in the bin. And then so he's the, not even watching the yeah, surf. And then all of a sudden, Nathan gets that wave and Carl's sitting there watching and she starts run down. And then there's Chubbs. He's like, oh, shit, I've missed something. <laughs> <laughs> he's herping down the beach as well. And um, it was just an epic moment. Like, he was so stoked and, you know, uh, cheering him up the beach was just absolutely awesome. And um, he had to do it in the last couple of seconds. And I had, like, a heap of texts and and people like, Nate doing this in the last 15 seconds isn't good for my heart rate. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he then went, uh, yeah, it was, it was super good to watch everyone, you know, cheer him up the beach and to bring home a, a national title. And... I think the the whole collective Victorian team, including um, shortboard loggers, uh, longboard and uh, para, um, I think there was only two other state title uh, national titles in that whole group. 
So, right. yeah, pretty stoked. I think we had more finalists than any other discipline as well. Um, but, yeah, they were super good. And Nath was pretty stoked, and he'd probably like to thank his, his sponsors, uh, Port Mac Bolo, um, for the cheap beers and, <laughs> you know, everyone else. But, nah, so, done yeah, coffee. Done coffee. Stewie. Um, yeah, absolute legend. So, um, what's up? Uh- what, what kind of board was you riding up at Nationals? Any Anyone know? Oh, I, yep, yep. He was on the Cramsey. The Cramsey there looks like, uh, you know, it's a it's a successful board. Bang. Yeah, Ma- successful uh, <laughs> marketing venture, this one, mate. Marky's winning heats. Yep. Nice winning heats. What happened to you? Yeah, well- <laughs> Well, yeah. I, I compete against Nate. Yeah, right. Okay. Sure. One of, only one of us can win, and he smashed me. <laughs> Mum, look. Obviously, keeping on on topic in terms of yeah, some pretty amazing things that 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 happened. Uh, another thing I want to touch on, which is obviously really close to you as well, Chris, is the Tom Wilson Award. You are a former recipient of this um, this year. A little bit different kind of criteria for for someone who took that can you yeah give us the rundown uh for those who don't know um moz um who passed away a couple of months ago now uh from the sydney bodyboard club it was decided to award it to him posthumously and um I think that was amazing. That was a, that was the best decision. I don't think there was many people that had a dry eye when they awarded it to the guy uh, to the the Sydney Bodyboard Club reps. Like I thought that was just the best decision because he was going to be there. And um, you know, unfortunately, Moz isn't with us anymore. Um, but yeah, absolutely epic to see it. You know, to see them recognise him and yeah, for for everyone who knew him, yeah, absolute uh, light of the sport. He he had that passion about it. Yeah, so Moz, also known as Mauricio Abrinoza. Um yeah, former ABA tour competitor as well, just genuine all-round good guy, one of those bodyboarders that could basically connect with any bodyboarding circle, um, had the skill, had the personality to, um, yeah, kind of fit in wherever he went. Uh, and, you know, that's not something that's just being said because he has passed, but, um, yeah, quite a sad circumstance. Moz, yeah, unfortunately passed away um, in the water. Doing what he loved. Doing what he loved. Yeah. I mean, it's not a good thing to ever have to say, but, yeah. yeah. So I've got to give a bit of a shout-out to the – I don't know who's picking the, the Tom Wilson Award, but it seems to be going to the right people. So, um, yeah, shout-out to those people as well. Yeah, it seems to be really positive. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, the last thing I wanted to quickly chat about, Chris, obviously love finishing on a high. This one, probably not so much of a high, but there was a little bit of controversy at the Nationals in the Open Men's Final. You were there. We weren't. We want to hear it from you first. Um, <laughs> put me in a hard spot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, the, the standard surfing was was absolutely amazing in the, the open men's final and uh you know i think there was some controversy around the scoring the scoring around yeah. one of the waves who was in that final again uh there was kai Delu. sorry kai if i mess up your name jimmy Lear, johnny crookshank and grant nutter you look at the the it was pretty tight final like a 12.63 winning 12.33 second 11, 8, 3. Yeah, so super tight. And then 10, 9, 1. Not much <coughs> in it at all. So I suppose had you know things gone different ways, it, it would have changed the outcome of it. Um, but, yeah, bit of controversy there. Yep. Um, I did speak to Johnny. He, like He expressed himself his dissatisfaction with the, the way it was judged in the end with one of his waves. Um, Quite publicly. Publicly, yeah. But, I mean, you know, I guess... People are allowed to, and I, I had a good chat to him about it because obviously, you know, I'd seen on social media as well, and and you know, he, he was just straight up honest. He said throughout the whole comp, he felt that um, barrels had been scored fairly highly, um, and he got a decent barrel in the final, and he felt it wasn't judged the same way it had been the rest of the event. So, uh, I guess that's. Fair and reasonable argument. If that's the way you think the judging criteria has gone the entire event, um, yeah. I, I mean, I watched 
Johnny, um, his wife Sarah put up a clip of all the waves throughout the um, from the final. Uh, everyone seemed to be surfing really well. I was really impressed with Jimmy Lee's actually waves. They were pretty impressive. That forward was good. Yeah. I do want to ask one question. Yep. And this isn't relative to just this heat. This is just actually in relation to the entire event. Um, is there a post-event meeting with the athletes? No. We, 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 and I'm going to use the perfect example of the World Surf League. You know, before every event, there is a judging criteria sent out to the athletes to say, hey, based on what the forecast conditions are going to be, this is what the judges are going to be looking to score highly on. Mm-hmm. And generally, that is either in a verbal meeting where athletes must attend or secondary, if not both, it's an email that's sent out to those athletes. <clears throat> Are either of those occurring at the Nationals? Because, I, and I, I'm not trying to defend or deflect anyone in this, this yeah. moment, but if that information is clear, that is going to remove any opportunity for this to happen. Yep, fair. I mean, we do it at bodyboarding, Vic, and, you know, state titles and everything as well, so. And you still can't win. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> I can't do the things that they're asking me to do. <laughs> I, I think the um, look. One thing I was probably disappointed with with the event was that you look at the other disciplines and they have in the event schedule about me, like the team managers and everyone meeting on the night before as a social thing, right? And there was nothing for bodyboarding. And then the Monday, I got pulled aside, like. Why didn't anyone come down? And I said, there was nothing written in there. And they're like, yeah, there is. And I'm like, and there was a few red faces around why there was nothing um, put in the communications to say, you must be there on the sat- Sunday night. And I think it, you're right. It's something that should be done where we're communicating, like where the, the, there is the communication of what the expectations are, what the criteria is, you know. And... Um, it helps the the athletes work out, you know, how they're going to go about things. And look, there was, but it also helps the overall success of the event. Oh, absolutely! Because everyone's work working towards the same goal. Yeah, yeah. And look, in you know, in the early, in the probably the first day when we were at Lighthouse, there was a couple of waves that were probably scored. Um, and there, I don't know what the criteria that had been given to those riders, but they were doing like a thousand spins to the beach. Um, but, you know, and then you had guys that were going out there and just got looking for that big move and getting that um, getting that clarification, it, you know, it is really important so that... Well, then, in that know, case, it seems problematic from the beginning yeah. because you've got two completely different tactics in the water. And it's, it's like, not to jump to other threads, but it's like I watch some of the, the Maldives... Um, IBC stuff and you see guys going for like flips or ARSs and then all of a sudden they're doing a flopper on the end and a couple of spins in like a foot of white water and uh, and they're talking about, oh, they needed that to finish. Do they? Like, it just, well, the short answer is no. No. It, just, it should be. That's irrelevant. The, the, you know, you look at your 10 judging courses and all the rest of it and you're looking for the This most- isn't the price is right. You're not trying to get nearest to the dollar. No. It's, it's your look like, you know, most the, the judging courses I've attended over the years, it'll state that you're looking for the most critical maneuver in the most critical part of the wave. It's act- Well, it's clearly stated yeah. in the, well, the IBC, formerly the IBA yeah. rule book that that is what needs to happen. But unfortunately, I just think it needs to be constantly- Reinforced. Yeah, 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 reinforced, discussed, <clears throat> and openly spoken about. Because not many people actually read the, re- 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 no. <laughs> the rule book. <laughs> I, I could probably count on, like, two hands how many people I know that read the rule book. But, yeah. you know, you look at, you, you're right, like, if you want to watch bodyboarding, you want to watch people go for broke. You don't want to watch, you know, that auxiliary stuff. Well, I, I think it's common knowledge everyone just wants to see progressive bodyboarding yeah that's 100 percent. yeah that, that, yeah yeah that's all i have to say <laughs> no, no, fair enough i think um moving on good segue absolutely uh benny it's your 40th we're gonna put you under the blowtorch right now uh recently saw a, an interesting post on social media 
with the new... Ooh, which, one, which one of my accounts? <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, the Australian Bodyboard League and a new logo flashing up all over the socials. Never heard of it. What's going on? <laughs> yes, this is a long bow to draw. But in a not- nutshell, um, yeah, and look, I'm happy to be open, transparent and honest. Um, essentially, it's a... It's a rebrand process and a, and a restart of what I was formerly doing with the ABA. Uh, obviously, myself, Nick Chandler, and some of the other kind of key role personnel that were involved in the ABA have had hundreds of conversations, especially during the pandemic, um, as to you know how we could improve, what we need to do to make it work, not just at a, a national kind of pro-am level, but how we can connect the dots with actually achieving what we always set out to achieve, which was to create a pathway for success through competitive bodyboarding. Um, that w- That's always been the vision. However, there's so many kind of parts that make up that machine. Um, first and foremost, we need to make sure that we're giving people the opportunity from grassroots. So club level that opportunity or the vision and scope to go, okay, well, I can get to that level. Um, I think I've spoken about this before. Essentially, where we got to with the ABA, you know, yes, we're a business. Um, We're a media platform. Um, We ran uh, on a shoestring budget, but our overheads were pretty high. Um, So, that kind of forced our hands to kind of leave the, the entry kind of doors open to essentially everyone, which doesn't work. Yep. It's not It's not promoting growth. It's not promoting to those juniors and grommets to go, oh, wow, if I work really hard at club level, you know, I can eventually make my way there. So, what the first thing that we, that we and I'm going to be very clear about this, is we are creating a seating for the ABL. Um, it's going to be quite complicated for 2024 and I guarantee it's going to piss a lot of people off. But if we want to get this right, we're going to have to break a couple of eggs before we can make that that premium omelette. Um, so the I hope I don't get this wrong. The seating for 2024 is going to be made up of a few different parts. First of all, out of respect um, for the previous ABA champions, so back in 2019, the top ten seatings from that will be seated in 2024. Obviously, they'll be formally invited. Um, The next 10 will be made up of the Opens rankings from this year's Nationals. The rest, which is 12, so we're going to have a total of 32 in the men's seating, will be made up of some sponsor wildcard spots. There will be local wildcard spots. And then to be confirmed, not sure yet whether we are going to include some international wildcard spots. But essentially, the top 20 is pretty much already locked in. Uh, again, there'll be a formal invitation process for that. But then the following 12 will be kind of made up of those locals, sponsors, and potentially internationals. Moving forward from that into 2025, Again, the only way that you will be able to make that 32 seeding is through the pathway. So, you have to compete at nationals or you have to be a sponsored wild card. You can't just... Gonna so, use- you're going to... No, just, no, just to clarify what you mean by that. Yes. So, it will... All the seedings for 2025, I understand what you're saying for 2024. Yep, absolutely. All the seedings for 2025 will come out of nationals. Correct. And only nationals. Correct. Okay. Yep. And that'll be a top sixteen. Uh, or a top. How many? How many? Well, we, we'll still have a seed. Yeah. Well, for or the, is it twenty-four or, or what do you? The, the seeding for the event will be thirty-two. Thirty-two. Okay. But yeah, for example, out of the nationals, we might take sixteen. Right. Because we do need to have spot. Yeah. Spot. Like if we're going to have, if we really want to see industry support these events, then part of that investment for them is they're going to want to see some of their riders that might not necessarily have made it through nationals. Yeah. So, so will that be – all right, no, just to clarify, it, right. mu- it must be – there must be a top 16 from the previous year though as well. So, top 
So you'll Correct. get you'll get yep. sixteen from nationals, and you'll have your top sixteen from the previous year. Correct. Okay. Correct. So the opportunity here now is for riders to next year. If you're not part of that seeding arrangement for 2024, correct. You need to start attending state titles. Absolutely. And then get a national, go into nationals in order to get seeding to go into these pro events. That's correct. Okay. Yep. Understood. And I'm sure there will be so many people that will disagree with, with this theory, but I think it's been tried and tested so many times and we still haven't got to it because- We've just been a little bit too complacent and just opened the doors yep. to- A bit loose. Yep. Trying to get old riders back into competitions and so forth. And don't get me wrong, like there's-, there's Which is exciting still. Absolutely. Yeah. Like there's, I could name a dozen kind of, let's just call them statesman generation of, of Australian bodyboarding that without a doubt would still be incredibly competitive at these events. And yeah, from a marketing point of view, absolutely. It's good to have them there. But that's not encouraging for people that are actually trying to start from the bottom and work yeah. their way up the top because it's it's quite overwhelming and scary because you go, oh, wow, like I'm, I'm doing really good at state titles, but all of a sudden I've got to come up against Ben Player. I've got to come up against Ryan Hardy. Like Andrew Lester might decide to show up and, you know, come an event or Damian King. Like, yeah, they are definitely not beyond their time like in, in any means, but they are st- still incredibly talented and in st- still incredibly competitive. But it's just that is not fair to have someone come in and essentially crush the dreams of someone that is actually following the pathway. Yeah. Yeah. So, you're, yeah. so you, you're genuinely trying to create a new pathway. Well, a structured pathway. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, which you see in pretty much every other sport. Um, we've just failed at it for a very long time. Um, so, also for 2024. Yes. Have you got an event structure as yet? Like, have you got? Are you able to make announcements on any competitions yet? Where or locations or anything like that? Yeah. Look, I I can definitely <coughs> give you a draft. Yep. Um, calendar for 2024. Um, well, one's basically locked in, which will be here in Victoria, in Warnable in March. Okay. Yep. Um. Myself, Chris, Dylan Beach, uh, and a whole bunch of other kind of people have been pretty helpful in getting that kind of business plan together. Uh, so that's really, really exciting for us uh, to be running, yeah, kind of a kickoff event in, in Warnable in March. Um, the second event on that kind of draft calendar will be Drambar on the Gold Coast or New South Wales, depending on how geographically correct you'd like to be. <laughs> and again, D-Bar is... It's like a skate park for bodyboarding. We, yep. We've spoken about this before. Yep. Love it. Um, one of the most consistent beach breaks in Australia. Yep. Um, you know, it can hold anything from two foot to, to eight foot. And, I mean, it's been proven in the past to be one of the most decorated kind of competitive spots in the country. Uh, and then the third one will be a little bit further down the coast. Um, again, still TBC, either Coffs Harbour or back on the northern beaches. Right. So... And, and from a calendar perspective, uh, essentially pretty much a month, uh, four to six weeks apart. Uh, and the reason being is we, we want to make sure that this series is also wrapped up leading into nationals. So then you've kind of already got your seating locked in from the, the ABL um, 2024 calendar. So that's pre-locked in leading up until the nationals. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Realistically, if there's pro riders out there, that do still have a desire to compete. Absolutely. Um, and they have competed in the past on the ABA. Yep. They're going to have to go back to states and then nationals in order to compete on this tour. Correct. Yep. Well, again, with the exception of if, if they were already uh, ranked in the, the top 10 from the 2019 ABA, yep. um, either that or the team that they might be riding for is a major investor of that event. Uh, and then obviously there'll be allocated wildcard spots, which they can potentially take from there. So you'll make an invite, to say, to that top ten of the ABA. Correct. If anyone says, "Oh no, I'm not, I'm not competing anymore," or on so forth, will that go down to the eleventh and twelfth? Correct. Yep, those invites. Yep. yep, absolutely. Being really stern with going down that pathway of the national results. Yep. Uh, and and Chris, feel free to comment on this. 
for us to develop and grow as a sport, um, it is really, really important for bodyboarding to build relationships. And one of the best relationships we have at the moment is with Surfing Australia and its state counterparts. Yes, there's some states where there's still a lot of work to be done, but we have seen the results of working on these relationships. I mean, Chris, the relationship we have with Surfing Victoria here is incredible. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it's, it's something we have worked really hard on. And I think we mentioned this in uh, my podcast, but you, <clears throat> we, they have the structure behind them. They have the know-how and whatnot. The bodyboarding is just not in a space at the moment to be able to have that same form of, you know, dedicated people to do jobs and whatnot. And, and also the, the connections as well. And, it's no secret that ever since, um, I guess that the you know we've had surfing in the Olympics, surfing Australia and whatnot have ended up with more money um, to spend. Once you get a couple of Olympic athletes, the Australian government will throw money at you. <laughs> um, but we can. Olymp- we're talking about Olympics, not Commonwealth Games here, are we? Yeah, no, so that's a whole other story. <laughs> we're not allowed to say Commonwealth <laughs> Games in Victoria at the moment, but um, yeah, you, you, you're spot on, and I, I think there's a there's work to be done in other regions, and there's work to be done with Surfing Australia, but we're heading in a really good direction. Um, we work ha- we work hand in hand with with them. Sounds fantastic. Uh, look, I, I just want to touch on maybe one or two more things about this yep. before we move into the the next topic, um, because again, it's always a talking point. When we run these events, yep, we want we want to view bodyboarders as athletes because that's what they are, right? They are they're training, they're putting in time. Yep, this is a lot of people want this to be their chosen career path. Bodyboarding is a sport, so people who play sport and get paid, they're athletes. We want these athletes to be paid. One of the most contentious conversation topics throughout the entire history of these events have been that the prize money isn't good enough. Mm -hmm. Part of our vision for what we want to do with the ABL is to make sure that we have budgeted accordingly to make sure that there is a significant prize pool for each of these events. So essentially the, the template that we've put together for all three of these events is exactly the same. For these events to all successfully run under the guidance of the ABL, there has to be a minimum price purse. I'm not going to say what that is yet, Yep. but to give, I guess, perspective, it would be the biggest price purse that I've ever been involved with for events. Obviously, there's things that we're doing differently to run these events, which should hopefully allow us to, to have that pool of money. Um, you know, yeah, in the past, we... we You know, we'd be with the ABA, we'd have 5K, which was big money. But we want, we generally believe that they need to be paid more than that. You know, it's got to be that, that carrot. Absolutely. Uh, It's got to be that thing that, that drives people and and give that prestige behind it so that they will, will compete and they'll be motivated to, to chase that. Absolutely. And, and from there, obviously, you know, for those that are successful and take home those prize purses, we, we'd hope that they're going to use that money to then help progress their per, uh, careers through other bodyboarding pathways, whether they're funding their own film trips or whether they're going on to compete at world tour events. Because, you know, we've talked about the world tour and we're going to talk about it again shortly. Like, there's no world tour events in Australia. No. Most of the current world tour locations are a long way away from Australia. Mm-hmm. Flying anywhere out of Australia at the moment isn't cheap. No. So we need to be able to provide financial opportunities for these athletes to represent our country on a world stage. Yep. And the only way to do that is with money. Yep. And uh, I think the other thing on the on the funding side of, um, I guess the ABL is we're we're looking to. Uh, for for the operational uh, side of things, we're looking to different avenues for revenue, such as grants or that sort of thing, um, <clears throat> to be able to support the uh, the running of the event, so that we can keep the the, the costs, um, you know, down. And uh, well, yeah, that sounds great. Um, changing gears a little bit. 
Um, up, up a gear or down a gear? Oh, no, this, I mean, this, it's, it's an exciting thing, I guess, to discuss. Um, it's been announced on social media that um, the Shark Island comp will be, um, the sick will be coming back in 2024 as well, which is obviously another event that won't really directly compete against you guys um, in terms of the ABL because th- that is basically an invite only sort of event. Uh, what's your thoughts? Um, I'm really excited about it. Yeah. I've, I've actually, Lukey O'Connor and myself have been playing a bit of phone call ping pong the last couple of weeks. <laughs> uh, I was in Bali for my brother's wedding. I think I had six missed calls from him then. We've been trying to catch up over Instagram. Apologies, Lukey. We just haven't found the time to connect and it's probably on me more than, than you. Um, I'm excited. I mean, Shark Island Challenge is by far the most prestigious bodyboarding event we've ever had oh, here yeah. in Australia. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Shane, you've you've had a lot more to do with yeah, it. Yeah, no, we've sponsored the event a couple of times when Mark Fordham um, was running the event. Um, it was always very exciting to go up. Uh, very stressful at the same time, though, because it's, you know, those guys are local. They make they, they get out there on, on, the, on the bluff, you know, trying to make a decision and, you know, I think one day Forty rang me and said, we're going tomorrow. So, Mark and I packed up the cars and shot up there overnight and got up there and we're standing all there with them at 6.30 the next morning and, uh, oh, yeah, boys, we won't run it today. Because <laughs> <laughs> traditionally they've run like a month window, haven't they? Is like, it like usually a- run a month window. Um, this year, well, what they've announced right now, I, I believe their first announcement came out that they're going to run it in May. Then the organisers actually realised there's no tides. Yeah, good tides. Yeah, good tides in in May next year. So they've actually announced uh, June, July. So um, that's traditionally when it was on anyway, wasn't it? It was during yeah those yeah. months. So uh, you know, it should be an interesting event. And but again, you know. There's always a lot of local invo- involvement there. Then they invite some outsiders as well. Um, they haven't announced exactly what format they're going to do yet. But um, oh, yeah, look, what, what, whatever, whatever Lukey and, and the, the crew do from, from there for this event, like absolutely, like they've got my full support. Yeah. Um, and Unleash I, the beast, as abs- 40 used to say. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, if, yeah, if, if Australian bodyboarding wants to make a big statement on the international stage. Yeah. This is where we're going to do it. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, and like I said, um, Lukey is probably one of the most passionate guys from around that region that is going to make this happen. Not saying that obviously the torch is being passed from from forty across to Luke, but you know, it's good to see some new blood in there actually wanting to see this thing go ahead. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm. I'm. It psyched. takes. I mean, I watched forty do it over several years when we were sponsoring it and. I think I saw 40 going grey every year. <laughs> it's getting greyer and greyer. Sounds like I, me with these podcasts. I, I, well, to be honest, <laughs> I believe at one point, 40 lost his job because he took off that many days trying to organise the event that he actually got fired. I said, no, nah, we, can't, we can't do it anymore. Oh, no. So, yeah, it's pretty – it is a stressful event because it's such a short window. You've got to run it on the, on the swell. You know, so you got the swell, you got the tides. It's and it's just a. So I, I don't know a lot about. It. I've I've been I've been there to check it a handful of times. Yep. I've been in the water once to surf, which was post Shark Island event. Was in the water for two hours, didn't get a single wave. There were that many people there, but again, from what I understand, it's a very very fickle wave in terms of having everything line up. I mean, that's how most I don't think it's fickle break, in that. But- it's, it's the tide window. Yeah. When you've got so many heats to, to get through. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, the, that's the stress. It's yeah. it's not so much the swell because, yeah, if you if you, get, you can see the swell coming, obviously. Um, but, yeah, having that window. Cause, so what, I mean, what's you, the you, best? So- like, there's I don't know. What is yeah, it? Yeah, I'm not local. <laughs> All yeah. those guys know. Luke would know it better. I mean, Desert Emerald. Yeah, he's, but, he's but, well knowledge in it. Um, yeah, I suppose like that's one thing you, as you know, Benny is like um, working in organisations um, for bodyboarding, holding events, and things like that. You try and think about. You know, where can I have an event that is going to break all day? Like, yeah. 
I've got eight hours of heats. How like what's this going to do on the tide? How's it going to change? And that and that's why beach breaks yeah. are a majority of the choice mm. for any event. Well, you even look at it. They yeah. they announced May. Thinking that would be fine, and then look at it themselves and go, "We can't hold an event in that window." Yeah, yeah. so yeah, pretty crazy. So it's it, good. Well, I, I think they're off to a good start. Then they've yeah. well, they've yeah. announced it. That's yeah, that's, that's exciting, that's and great. they've got plenty of time. I mean, there's there's a lot of time between now and then. So, hmm. and and it's bringing me back to all those clips of um, like remember Australia Body Border. Uh, magazine with yep. Shark Island, like in it, and like the Rush films with Shark Island Challenge. I think there was one that was just called um, SIC. R- 2001 was one yes. of the most memorable Shark Island Challenge yes. events. Yep. One person in particular. That was the Winnie, the Winnie airdrop? Well, was it he wasn't. Was that 2001 no, or? that was later. But there was a guy that did an airdrop in that event, someone I think we'd all love to get on this potty at some stage. Hmm. Born and bred Victorian, Jace Hazel. Really? Yep. Yeah, okay. So, the Hoff was in his prime at that stage <laughs> on many different formats. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, we actually did a release a film on the 2009 one. Yep. Uh, when you and one. Oh. You and Donnie. <laughs> yep. Which was great. Worked except, out well. <laughs> uh, except our old mate, Tezza. Shout out, Tezza. How are you, mate? Um, I think he, he called, he said- you and Donachi <laughs> instead of you and Donachi. Donachi or Donachichi? Yeah. I think I was one or the other. I was. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> crazy. But now, um, the other yeah. thing I had to chat about was uh, Watto. Need a bit of surgery, mate. Oh, the old uh, Victorian <laughs> surfer's ear has come back. I was sort of wondering if we could hit up the surgeon that seems to have done everyone down here. And yeah, it's we- actually this week is my one-year anniversary from getting my ear drilled last year. I, um, for those who don't know, I had my right ear drilled in 2008, I reckon it was. Must have been 08, 07. I was, it was just after my 21st birthday. and um, That's early. I was the youngest person the surgeon had ever done. Wow. And I spent- You're such a grub. <laughs> Just clean your ears, mate. <laughs> I, I spent uh, five five months out of the water because um, I had a uh, scar tissue grow back and they almost drilled again. And then my left ear's progressively gotten worse to the point where it'll block and block. And, you know, when you've, uh, you and your doctor have had a lot of conversations about it, when you go in there and you're like, uh, it's time. He's like, it's time. I'm like, yeah, it's time. He's like, prints out the <laughs> referral. <laughs> Go ahead. So I went and saw the surgeon, and the surgeon, I had my hearing test, and amazingly, my hearing in my ear what? that has been operated. <laughs> I, 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 one of us was going to do that. Sorry? <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. My hearing in the ear that has been drilled is worse than the ear that hasn't been drilled. Yeah. Go figure that. Well, my, I got mine drilled, as I said. 12 months ago mm. and my my hearing in that ear is still really bad. Well, he, he looked in both my ears because uh, I don't know if he, if it didn't say it on the referral or not, but just refer for exostosis and he goes, looks at both of them. He's like, which one do you reckon the worst one is? Yeah. Well, I'm getting all the tinnitus in mine just ringing. Yeah, I get that. If, yeah. there's, if there's no background noise, I'm... All I can hear is ringing. We're yeah. having a proper men's midlife crisis. <laughs> oh, There's oh, so many guys going through it at the moment. Like this, I've, I've, you speak to so many guys, and I'm, I'm just not going to get it going. You told, I'd, I'd you told me to, the 40 to 50s was going to get better, except for this. Well, he had it done at 21. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I'll, I'll, I'll probably get my second one done at uh, 30. I'll be 37, 36, 37. But yes, we're going to be talking about vasectomies. Sure, <laughs> <laughs> I've had one of those already. <laughs> <laughs> but um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, sh- I should. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you would. <laughs> uh, uh. But the old surgeon reckons that I've got probably about another year or two out of the year I've had drilled. So um, it's time for round two in the righty. So, so, again, this is new to me. My hearing's pretty damn good. But does it just continue? Like if it just keeps growing over? Like it's, you can't it's, just keep drilling the ear. Yeah, no, it's it's bone growth. Yeah. I- yeah. yeah, yeah. So if once they drill, it, it just freshens up the bone, and it'll it'll keep 
grow and growing. Because so, <laughs> how he explained it to me, and he drew me a picture, classic. He was so like, you're telling me a, something about your bones growing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> but it's basically the evolution of man. Yeah, <laughs> because <laughs> legit, we, we are our body is growing to meet the conditions that we're living in. Yeah. So, so we've got. So hard I'm bone. a step above you right now. <laughs> Mate, we're, you know we're, how you get the eight standing and I'm the man standing we, up next to you. We have gone so far off topic. <laughs> yes. And and you can just solve this all by a couple of plugs. <laughs> yes. Blue tack actually is yeah. even cheaper. Oh, you love blue tack. Oh, I love the blue tack. I can't do blue tack. It feels disgusting in my ear. No, nah, blue tack's the, the way to go. $4.50 will get you through a full year. I have just started just out of my own personal curiosity trying this i think they're called putting surf- putting plugs in um <laughs> are they called surfiers yeah that's what i wear yeah the first time you wear them you're like holy shit darth vader's in my eardrum <laughs> you hear yourself go ah, ah. <laughs> like, i mean they're, they're pretty incredible can you hear from you can that's right. the thing and obviously the mesh is so thin it must be multi-layered or something yeah. so you can still hear but you're duck diving or whatever the water isn't getting in so we were having a. Co- I was well, having what's a co- the cost of those? Fifty bucks. Yeah, I'm. I'm about to. Uh, Surfing Vic have just signed a deal with a mob that does the the castings in the ear, and they've got like a check valve in them, so you can hear. That's my next thing. But I was talking to Dad about um, what's the value of those. Yeah, you don't want to know. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what. Yeah, I mean, that's what we got to look at. But <laughs> yeah, I was talking to Dad about the surf the surf ears, and I. I've gotten used to them now. Now I'm used to them. First, like I reckon, the first two months, like I'd paddle out and I'd go for an ARS or something, and it just my perspective was all off. And I said to Dad, "I'm like, I think I finally got used to them." He's like, "You should just wear blue tack." He's like, "Are these things strong?" And I said, "Well, Dino owns the set." Shout out to Dean Alford. And um, I said, "But granted, Dean has destroyed a couple of sets." And then I thought to myself, "He also breaks a leash every Dean, second." Dean surf. destroys all his surf. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, like his boards don't last yeah. very long either. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. Really, it, it's a uh, yeah. So it, it's been tested by Dean. Um, I don't know if he's still wearing them. He's, or not. The, he's the original crash test dummy. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Good work, Dino. <laughs> Love you, mate. Look, probably. Just coming backwards just a little bit. One more kind of – well, there's a couple more competitive things we want to chat about. DK Sessions um, yes. is on now. It's on today. The first day yep. was today. We're, it's, today we're recording. It's a Friday. Uh, Clayton Pickworth ran the first round today uh, with the second round hopefully running tomorrow up at Port Mac. Um, just shout out to Clayton. He's uh, doing a good job with the DK crew up there. Well. It's got a good gathering of crew up there as well. Um, Very cool. Dane Pope's gone up. Doc. The doc's up there. Um, all, all the general, the normal suspects. You yep. look Tyson at the- Ryan, I think's gone. Yep. Ga- Gaz would be down there, wouldn't he? Gary Thatcher. Yep. He had multiple DK sessions winner, I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm just yeah. looking at the stacked app now Grant because, Maloney. um, yeah, one thing I can pick on you for, Picky. I'm a life eats man, not a stacked man. I like to go and download stacked. Controversial. <laughs> that's, Controversial. That's that's just my humble opinion. But I'm looking at the stacked app, and there's a beautiful picture of Popey drinking out of the bottle. Oh, look at him. Yeah, the dream. Magical. Oh, yeah. Also, shout out to Popey. I've got your third place trophy still at my place from <laughs> Nationals. So, um, <laughs> when we catch up, I'll give it to you. <laughs> Yeah, so probably just moving to the the biggest competitive platform there is, which is the IBC. I mean, I've been watching as much as I can. What's your thoughts? Um, That was a long pause. (laughs) (laughs) I asked you first. (laughs) What do I think? Um, Jeno's going to think you're going to have to edit that pause out. (laughs) (laughs) No, we'll just add crickets. (laughs) What do I think? I've, uh, I've been... Watching as much as I can, which is usually the finals rounds. Um, I've been enjoying those. It's it's they've. I think they've listened a little bit in terms of the commentary and that sort of stuff. They've had Jay Real on doing a really good job. Um, they've had a couple of South African guys that I'm not going to remember off the top of my head on there. Uh, Jerry came on for a little bit, did a bit of commentary as well for one of the events he was at. Um, that's been really positive. They've got a few little issues, and I'm going to actually 
this is probably a good one to put to Watto um, because you watch so much WSL. Yeah, I'm and, and so do I. Um, and speaking of WSL, also today, opening day for the finals. Yeah, Trestles. Yep. Oh, is that opening day today? Yeah. Huge. Right. Okay. Yep. So I'm, you know, just just quickly, bad time zone for Trestles. I hate the time zone, but you know. Yeah, what time is it kicking off tonight? I think it's like 2 a.m. or something like that. <sighs> is yeah. that the alarm, boys? Yeah. yeah. Second day of Sintra as well today. So that's, yeah. So it's we're all sort happening. of in the middle of a lot of stuff happening out there. Yep. Um, but the question I had was uh, I think what the WSL has done really well is for the general public to understand what they expect as a completion of a wave. Yeah. So that what's a, what's a make, basically, and what's not. Yeah. I think uh, the IBC at the moment has a couple of little issues mm-hmm. with- Would you call them indiscrepancies? It is, because there's, there's definitely some things where they've called it a make where a guy's bounced and then, I guess, kind of appeared to dive out the back. Who's- Whose wave was it last year? Was it last year at Fronton, I think it was? And it was like a flip into a, like a barrel. It and might have it, been. It was one of the South African guys. Was it Tristan or was I think it? it was, I think it might have been Tristan. Was it Ian? It was, one, it was one of them. Yeah. At Fronton, yeah. Where I can't even remember if they made it a make or not. It was pretty controversial. Yeah. And it, yeah, it was really hard because they're like, no, he, oh, no, they, they did. I think they did say that he made it. And he's, he's sort of like forward motion a little bit and then bang. Yeah. And it's- I think the rest of the wave wrapped in on him. Yeah. It's it's much like you're spot on. You you watch the WSL and I think about- You have uh, to sort of hold it for three seconds after whatever coming out of a barrel or yeah. whatever with a WSL. Like you definitely got to have stood there. And yeah. I, I think they've got to do something like whether you hold on for three seconds before- it, ditching or I don't know. There's something. It's like in the WSL, I think of Italo's wave. Remember Italo's, um, it was like a full rope at Narrabeen, I think, a couple of years ago. Yeah. And you could see him just like sort of, they called it a non-make. Like it was all over the shop. And I've, yeah, I was, I was, I've seen a bit of that in the, in the IBC where they, you know, someone's done a move and they're sort of like just holding on to their board and they're not. You got to maintain momentum, forward yeah. momentum, yeah. Um, and what they expect in terms of a rider riding away clean, yeah, to what to what section is you know really you know so so the public understands when they're viewing because I mean we're all judging at the same time when we're watching. Oh, so. every, every, oh we us armchair judges, yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And, and I, Tanner had an issue. I'm going to not might have been the chili comp. He was in the in the final. I feel like Tanner might have been on the wrong end of the. He didn't, he didn't quite run times. away. He didn't ride away in a great move, didn't ride away from it. And they called it incomplete, which is fair enough. But it just it seems like a couple of other times other riders have done similar and it's been called complete. So that's that's just one of the little issues I've got with it. I think what they what they seem to be putting together is, is pretty good though at the moment. I think one of the events I watched, I think it was Maldives, I found some of must have been the section I watched, but the the commentary in that was pretty average, right? And um, well, Jay did a lot of that. There was like it was through through the juniors because I wanted uh, okay. to watch um Ryan Hill Smith. Yeah, I think uh, they rest all the main. Yeah, so shout out to Ryan for going over there from um from Australia and having a red hot crack, and um I watched all his heats. Pretty patriotic that way. Um, but uh, yeah, I some of that um. Yeah, some of the the commentary in that was hey, just like oh, it wasn't technically right, and it wasn't sort of um, it wasn't engaging or anything to the yeah. point where I turned the the thing down. And here I am that in the past I've sat there and like gotten annoyed about Strider and the WSL. <laughs> so, well, on this note, then if we're if we're talking about commentary, be- best commentator in bodyboarding. I thought you were going to say all Ooh. over. Well, no, the the you, like if you, if you're gonna if you're gonna pull someone back into the the commentary mix on a world stage, I would I wouldn't like to pick just one person. No, and, of course not. You need no, a panel. No, you need a panel, and the reason being is, you know, they might have eight hours of dead air to fill, and they've got four or five days to fill. Like you haven't got enough stories. To I mean, fill. we're we're running out of gas after an hour. Yeah, yeah, and. Like, <laughs> 
I mean, the one, the one thing you appreciate about, you know, cricket commentary, footy commentary, um, what they do now is bring past players back. Who and are, there's reflection. Who are, who, are, who are giving, you know, really good commentary, uh, really insightful, but you're also – they're telling stories you know, from, from their time and history. One thing, because of the dead periods that you might get in a in a heat with bodyboarding or surfing, is that you know you might get two waves. It's possible, you know, you might not even get a wave. So you, you need to be able to have something to talk about, and whether it be you have one main, you know, commentator, and then you swing those experienced guys in that people want to hear stories from. Absolutely. I think you need yeah. a couple of people to make the dialogue. Like, you know, you can have one person announcing, but the dialogue between a couple of people and then rotating, like, different people in makes it so much yeah. more engaging because they're like, oh, so what did you think about that? And they might not agree. Yeah. I mean, because you can say Manny, and he did do a fantastic job, but he commentated so many events over so many years, so – your stories get kind of used up and so forth as well. Like Manny would probably be a good guy to have as the head guy because he's um, I agree. bilingual yep. as well, So, which is, which is really helpful, obviously. Um, and then have those other people just swinging in. Yeah. Yeah. Thoughts? I concur. Yeah. Probably a couple other questions I'd love to ask about the IBC or just the world stage. And again, I think we've already talked about it before. Um, lack of Australian riders on the world tour. Why? I think there's a <clears throat> there's one screaming big thing. Yep, in flashing lights. Cost. <laughs> Care to elaborate? Yeah, it's cost. Yeah, absolutely. Let, let's be honest. Like, you know, I, I'm a I'm a numbers person. Um, I like to work out what the return in, on investment is. If you're sitting there, like economy flights, hotels, all the rest of it, you know, if you're spending 10, 15 grand to go to a comp. Um, Where the return through prize money yeah. is not going to yeah. cover those costs. Exactly. And you'll look at some of the unique ways coming out now, like once again, Ryan Hill Smith, they ran the, um, the crowd crowdfunding, funding, yep. um, which, you know, they got, got good sort of uh, engagement in but <clears throat> from Australia it's expensive let's be honest yep. like you said before Betty I've noticed uh, looking through my budgets at what my travel spend's been before COVID since after COVID it's blown up like you know your trip to the US is an extra two to three grand USD on top of what it used to be for the same period of time you touch base on, on crowdfunding me personally I'm not a fan of yep. that for I'm not against supporting people, yep. um, but I think there's more professional ways that athletes can can raise revenue to support themselves, and yep. that's through better management. Yeah, I had a good chat to um, to Lockie Cramsey the other day. I thought it was it sorry was- who. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, Nate. Was that a name drop? <laughs> Lock- Trademark. Drop the Locker was hot. I was going to say Lockie Cramsey, the gentleman's name behind a model of board that seems to be winning everywhere at the moment. <laughs> um, we get a dollar for every time that name gets said in the pocket. Ding. Ding. The Cramsey counter. <laughs> Ding. Uh, the reason I was chatting to him is because I just I wanted to understand more what he thought everyone, all the other Australian riders and that were thinking as well. And, and it's exactly that. It's that return on, on investment. Um, that the spend, because all the comps are either in South America or Europe, the cost of getting from Australia, uh, you know, the decisions in between comps, whether to be coming back to Australia or whether to stay on and, yep. and continue and, and, and continue on to the next event and what you do with your time and, and the cost of that in between. The, the, you're spot on. You, the One of the things I think of is um, I was listening to Josh Kirkman in, in one of the podcasts and he was talking about when he was traveling around and he he said, I was lucky enough to have a, a reasonably uh, decent paying job. Yep. And the flexibility, like if you're a full-time employee- which, he, was, he was actually living in Europe at the time too. Yeah, yep. which makes things easier. Yep. But if you're a full-time employee, you get four weeks off a year, which you're going to need to be the full-time employee to be able to fund this. Like if you do every event, you might be looking at- 
Let's be honest. But even four weeks off a year, right? Let's just say you're you're picking four events. Like four weeks, like you're going to lose five of those days through transit to get to some of these locations from Australia. Yep. It's ridiculous. If you did the whole IBC tour at the moment, I reckon you'd be in for 40, 50K. I think you're being a bit too thin there, mate. Yeah. Yeah. To be honest. It depends how you live. It depends where you're living. Yeah, you know, like are you what, staying- would you, what would the cost be from Australia? Like you're probably looking at. I just uh, so my flights to Dubai last week I think were four and a half grand return. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll when you give- got accommodation. Yeah. I'll, I'll give some other perspective. Like I recently flew to Bali for my brother's wedding. Hmm. It was fifteen hundred dollar return flights. Like yeah. first time to Bali for me. Yeah. Quite shocking because you know from what I understood about Bali, it was one of the cheapest places to. Well, to travel not, to. Yeah, since COVID, it's not. But, it, no. but nothing's cheap anymore. You look at, you know, I've been to the US a stack of times lately and the price of food just in the US yep. has gone, like, risen dramatically. It's the same as buying food in Australia and then you've got to put a 20 30% tip on top. That's yep. why you went to that all-you-could-eat ribs night. <laughs> No, it's chicken wings. Chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, put, it was put back to me that, yeah, basically the prize money isn't a big enough draw card to get Australian guys in right. because of the cost. Would cra- would- on, on the world stage? At the moment. Yep. 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 Would there be more interest, do you think, if there was an Australian event? Ooh. See, well, I- th- they'd want to attend that event, but I mean, you've still got to, I mean, one of, one of the shames I think of the IBC at the moment is is that there's not that Hawaii event. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because Hawaii is traditionally a place that the entire world can get to on a, on a, shoestring. You know, on a shoestring budget. So. And get good waves. Yeah. It, well, let's and, be honest. And, and can flow on into other projects outside of, of the comp. Yeah. Um, you know, some of these places where they're going, it's not conducive to doing a surf trip or waiting around because- I, I'm going to be honest, and this is going to sound really funny. It's about time you're honest. <laughs> but when we watch the Maldives, like when you think of Maldives, what do you think? Well, I've been there. There's much better ways than that place. But, <laughs> you, know, but, like, but you think of beautiful places that are like, you know, beaches and it islands is beautiful. and stuff it, like it that. It is. I mean, that's what the Maldives is. And it's, then you flick over to the live stream and you see a bridge in the background yeah. and the old Qatari airlines yeah, landing It looks as the, industrial as, yeah. as anywhere else in the world. And it's urban surf. Yeah, it does. Look like it, it, it does, yeah. yeah. And it, but it still smells like Avgas too. <laughs> but it's probably warmer there. Yeah. And um, But you, you see that. And you can sort of, I'm I'm making assumptions here, but they got, a, I guess they got a fair bit of money from the Maldives government, and they've sort of dictated yeah, it must, where it they must be to purely promote Mali as an island, yeah, as opposed to the other islands as a part in the chain, Maldives as because a whole. you know Lower Fushi and Jails and all that and all those other breaks there. There's world class waves there, so yeah. it's it's kind of strange that they choose Mali, except for the reason that. It, it's purely there to promote, you know, that part of the Maldives. I I do want to just touch base on though what what I said before. Yep. Is you know with the off the back of the crowdfunding thing. I don't think, and I'm sure I'll probably hurt some feelings here. Aspiring professional bodyboarding athletes need to be better at marketing themselves. They cannot expect their skill alone is going to attract attention from brands. I think you, we- you go to ev- any other sport, any other athlete, mm. at a high end, they'll have athlete managers. Yep. At a mid midway or a bottom end, they are out grinding, you know, with their own independent proposals, presenting themselves to, to companies to say, hey, this is me, this is what I do. I think I'm a good fit for your brand. This is, this is reminding me like- oh. The, the conversation we had in, in Shane's podcast, we were talking about um, the rise of social media and whether you might be deemed as an influencer or, you know, like someone who promotes themselves, like, you know, is producing content. And one person I see that's doing that consistently at the moment is Tom Morris, who, who rides for um, Function. But um, <clears throat> we in that same conversation, we talked about how surfers got paid, the, the STAB series and... I still, I, I said it in the last one, but I'll, I'll attest to it now. It's one of the best documentaries I've ever watched on how 
people get paid and like the Jamie O'Brien or the um, JJF's brother, like um, Nate Florence, like he makes a whole heap of money out of YouTube clicks and, and, and uh, you know, building content. Yeah. There's definitely probably, there's a, probably a little bit of a disconnect at the moment where guys haven't made that transition from, say, competing yep. to free surfing and then producing your brand, being an influencer. Because yep. if you're free surfing, you are basically an influencer Correct. now. So yep. you've got to really have a, a game, um, a social media game. And-, and let's be honest, social media is like managing social media is tiring. Like I look at the stuff for Body Pointing Vic and – You've got to build the content. You've got to write the post. You've got to then post it at a you know certain time. And then I think myself and Mark have had plenty of conversations with. I think I've had conversations with you two guys about your it. only fans' knees work. <laughs> oh, my only fans yeah. is terrible. Well, the shaving needs to shave down. As well. <laughs> <laughs> but like you, he's fo- like, oh, look at the time. <laughs> <laughs> he did look at his watch then. <laughs> but you, you look at the algorithms at the moment, and you know we've talked to people lately where. They might be getting put down to the bottom of the spire of the stack because they're not spending money on boosting their posts or whatever it may. Well, be. that that's business. That's that's, right. that's marketing one hundred and one. You got to spend money to make money. That's right. A couple of other things about IBC Tour. Mm-hmm. Um, Dave Hubbard. Yep. Just won his tenth world title for DK. Phenomenal. That's epic. Amazing. Yeah. Yep. That's I, and and I don't think there's been much fun fanfare about it, which I think is. There probably needs to be a bit more about it. Um, not saying the guy lives in the shadow of his brother, but I mean he he's been underrated for way too oh. long, and then it, it's it's mind boggling because the, the stats tell a completely different story. Yeah, he's hands down one of the most successful, versatile bodyboarders the sports ever. He seen. rips on prone too. Like, absolutely, absolutely tears on prone. Um, everyone knows that I'm a I'm a pretty big Jeff Hubbard fan, but. Dave does a really good job. Yeah. So, shout out to Dub. And probably the other thing to mention is uh, Tanner McDaniel currently leading. T- Tanner's had a few, correct me if I'm wrong, I haven't followed this really closely, but Tanner's been the bridesmaid at almost every he comp. Has, has he? unfortunately, the poor bugger. Is, but uh, uh, he's been consistently getting seconds. Yeah. <laughs> well, he hasn't won an event. <clears throat> but he's at the top well, of the table, isn't he? Uh, yeah, which, you know... We hope that he. But we would all agree that he may have been unlucky to not win a few. Well, he's, oh, well yep. he's, I mean, consistency is is fan, you know, it's really showing. Um, who was the last um, tour winner that didn't win an event? I could only give you the stats on stand up. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna pass. I'm pretty sure. Can I'm, I- can I find a oh, friend? Maybe if I'm wrong, I'm not going to look like a fucking idiot. But uh, <laughs> I'm pretty, pretty sure. The first time. <laughs> Benny Players first. Oh. Was, I don't think he won an event. In he was just consistent. Third. He was cons- most consistent throughout oh, the year. BP, you've got my number, mate. Yeah, Shoot I'm going to get a phone call. call. <laughs> 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 a stern email if I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah. 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 Send all correspondence to uh, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Benny O'Board at ABL. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah. I'm going to get a few emails to that one, I think. <laughs> uh, all right. So, we're going to take a bit of a hard right. Uh, coming up to a pretty important time of the year for, I guess, uh, industry. Um, by that, I mean... A lot of the brands are just having all their new season gear land here in Australia. Shano, obviously, I'm going to absolutely grill you because, well, you're surrounded by two of your biggest- The Benny probably- Aborn model has not turned up yet. I apologize. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Chris and I are probably two of your biggest investors. <laughs> yeah. Since, since uh, Scotty Hubry moved up to the oh, Gold Coast, yeah. Scotty. Yeah. shout out to Scotty. Um, you know, got the kids through school. <laughs> he actually rang me the other day. It was, I think, the first time he never asked me for a board. Oh, wow. Out of all the phone calls we've had. I remember surfing in a heat with Scotty Hube, uh, with uh, a bunch of guys in the back when it was at um, MP uh, Mornington Peninsula Bodyboard Club. And there was five of us in the heat, and we were all riding Scotty Hubry uh, cast-offs. We'd all bought a board off. 
I remember Scotty Hubery, uh you and Scotty Hubery, Scotty taking off on a, in a free surf day and him cutting, he not not realising that he dropped in on you, cutting back into you and broke his tooth. He <laughs> ran full noise into me like, I'm like, he's going to turn, he's going to turn. Bang. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Needs his corrective glasses. Shout out, Scotty. <laughs> um, mate, some big stuff. Shano, obviously, big announcement with new team rider for Function. Brad Stone. Boom. Welcome to the team, Brad. Be rad. Yes. Um, Stoney, how'd that come about? So... I met Stoney a couple of times along the journey. Concrete, um, concrete in your driveway, right? No, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I could use that at the moment. <laughs> um, no, I met him. The first time was in Sorrento down here. Guy Drup introduced me to him yeah, right way on, back man. in the day. Yep. And then- Guy shot me a message today, actually. Oh, good good G'day, Guy. Um, and then I uh, had a good surf with him up at Dickie's with Benny Wells the three of us one day. That was good. But, yeah, I hadn't really spoken to him for a long time. But then recently saw uh, Andrew Hoff's film Coned, um, which I think a lot of people might have seen by now. It's on the Riptide on the Ruby, side. Yep. It's Ruby on side, yep. YouTube and that as well. Um, yeah, good film. Andrew Hoff, he's out of the, the Shire up in Sydney. Um, but I was really impressed by Brad's section. And I yeah was having a beer with Benny Wells and said, oh, Where's he sort of at? And um, Benny said, oh, no, interesting you ask. And sort of all came about that way. So, um, yeah, it was really good to have him on the team. Like Brad's yeah, got a lot of energy. He's uh, he's pretty hungry at the moment and, and chasing and, big surf. Yeah, you know, big stuff. Yeah. So, like, loves the big stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, yeah, genetically geared to, to do that kind of wave riding. I'm not saying he's following in the footsteps of his, his brother, but, I mean, what a what – a, Brotherhood of talented wave riders. Yeah, they actually unfortunately just had a bit of a loss yep. last week as well. Their, yep. their father passed away. So um, shout out to the boys. Yep. and Thoughts and prayers there, lads. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, but yeah, Brad will have a model out um, hopefully in October. Ooh, so hopefully landing in October? That will be the goal at this point. <laughs> yeah. Hot off the press. <laughs> so, and for those that, that might want to get their hands on a uh, um, Bradstone model, obviously straight to the website or uh, no, no, it's going to be available in all the all the usual bodyboard hardware specialists. So gotcha. um, yeah, we can expect to find it hopefully in your local um, yeah sometime in October. Yeah, and along uh, with the rest of the Nomad and Function range with all the all the new boards coming out. Well, we've had a few released uh, in August. Um, Sam Thomas's new model, Chase O'Leary's new model. Uh, and then all the Attica weddies uh, are just hitting stores as well for summer. Yeah, so summer range, any big changes there? Uh, there's a couple of new little things, but um, yeah, keeping it pretty simple and um, all the chest sips and everything was what is selling at the moment. So I haven't taken any advice from Chris and me about the retro colours yeah. in summer uh, range? It, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, speaking of colours, I'm super excited, uh, as a few people well, know. Well, you told me you were coming out. As we're pulling up the drive, well, mate. This, like, this is true. <laughs> Did you read the what's on the beer you just gave me? Um, <laughs> my, my, my board last year, I had the uh, nitro with the with the the crocodile slick on it, and the new chase has the fire slick. Yes. The graphics. Uh, fire slick it does, and I'm looking forward to getting. I was going to say hands. you haven't got it yet, have you? No, I'd be disappointed if he got a board before me. No, no. I, I think it suits me more because I'll, I'll you know, He'll be my, on fire. My, my background on fire. <laughs> yeah, he's been on fire. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> if he sheds anything to go by, this yeah. board will be hot. Yeah. Um, I mean, any other kind of product? I mean, tech updates, mate. What's the the rundown or the breakdown of some of the the structures of the new boards? Uh, probably the main thing is the graphic slicks. Yep. Um, new graphic slicks coming in this year. Um, which is pretty good. Uh, Sam Thomas's board, we've just released uh, the D12 version, which is um, double stringer with mesh, which uh, is kind of unique in our range. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And, you know, at a good price at three fifty. So, so thinner, thinner board with a double stringer? Uh, no, because you can see what Sam 
generally realize some of those the big clips of Sam are, lately. Yeah, oh. yeah, the couple groveler, absolute groveler, shippies and all yeah. that of land. The Tim Boyton <laughs> video that yeah. was close. Yeah. <laughs> I know you relate to his riding quite a bit, Benny. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> same, same, but what, different. Yeah, usually, yeah. usually when he's sitting on a cliff looking over waters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, I mean, again, Sam, definitely one of the biggest kind of up-and-coming big wave charges here in Oz. Adding to that, Brad Stone, any projects in the works there with those uh, two guys? We've got a couple of little trips happening. Um, what I'm going to actually try and do is get Sam and Brad together. Yep. Um, and try and do something together. So that's something for me to organise over the next Wild. couple of weeks and see what we can do there. So, nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I guess, yeah, we've been rambling on for almost an hour and a half All now, right. lads. We better start winding so, up. I think it's about time we almost start celebrating, you know, me. <laughs> you know, this, this, this should be my day. <laughs> yeah. um, but a few kind of passing questions I want to run by before I wrap it up. And this is to both you. Firstly, what's got what's got you both stoked on bodyboarding lately? Oh, stoked! What are you can go stoked it, Ted. Um, probably coming back to the nationals. Just watching everyone get so excited about the sport of bodyboarding. Um, that's it always reinvigorates my interest. Um, you know, if you've got a hobby that you've enjoyed for thirty odd years, you have peaks and troughs. Uh, in that sport, but um, yeah, just watching. I, I think this year for for nationals for me, it wasn't about how I competed personally. It was about watching everyone else's success. I think I've hit a turning point in my career. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, as in those that can't do teach. Well, I am an instructor for probably about another three weeks, but um, <laughs> yeah, I. <clears throat> it probably brings me to my low light. I think I had a realization at nationals that. I don't have the competitive fire that everyone else has anymore. Yeah, I sort of competitive people out there. Like I, well, mate, it's pretty hard to come up against Mark and Nice. Oh, I, I, <laughs> I, I tell you what, you know, like our team at nationals this year, watching Lyndall and Ryan, two of the most competitive and enthusiastic people you'll ever meet and watching like the process they go they go through shout out to benny roberts as well the same as benny like he's Man, so- we've got some good people at bodyboarding vic don't we <laughs> benny Amazing roberts Amazing people uh, he, he'll, he'll kill me because I'm calling out his, his secret tip, but Benny Benny Roberts is a, a man that will every uh, for a 20 minute heat a wave every two minutes 10 waves every heat that's his goal and you watch him and he's keeping busy and it can be like the flattest heat. And um, I was watching some of his like heats at nationals and 10 waves, 10 waves, 10 waves. So, yeah. That's, a, that's an interesting tactic. It is, isn't it? Because it doesn't, I mean, if it works for him, that's great. But it's not something that can always <laughs> pay dividends. And then you've got Nath on the other side that plays the long game. <laughs> yeah, real long. <laughs> well, that's what I'd probably say, like, what's stoked for me, like, yeah, Nathan Clark winning. Yeah, um, shout out, shout out to Clarky for yeah. winning, and and I mean his amazing training program of uh, six points at the bowl <laughs> over night before. Uh, that's 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 it's inspiring. I, yeah. I think you, you haven't put enough mayo in it. I think there was a few more points. <laughs> well, one one thing that was super exciting about Port Mac was the fact that it was four dollar fifty schooners. Where in in Melbourne, you're like you're buying a round of schooners for like twenty bucks. <laughs> In in uh, Port Mac, and um, then you come to Melbourne, you buy one beer, it's like twenty one dollars. Yeah, it's just heartbreaking. Well, welcome to Melbourne. Yeah, where's your black t shirt? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, what's well, how about you, Benny? About time you asked. Come on, mate. Uh, two things for me. Two things. Uh, well, it was about eight, but I'm going to focus on two. Uh, what got me stoked on bodyboarding lately? Well, it's probably almost a school term ago now. When um, but, yeah, got to have the opportunity to, well, had some support from some really great people to have the courage to swim out at Lunas, oh, which is something yes. that I've, that I've been sick. wanting to do for a very, very long time. Um, obviously, I love- To surf? No, no. to take photos. Photos, uh, yeah. I love taking photos. Um, had Yeah, Lockie Cramsey, Brad Stone, fly down with, with obviously, MJ. Uh, I wouldn't have been able to do it without those guys, like, I don't know. I don't know what it is about that place. It's just it's beautiful, but it's 
fucking frightening. Pretty rugged. Yep. Um, but yeah, MJ was there and also Luke Barker, yep. well-known um, photographer, very creative photographer from down here in Vico. Yeah, kind of supported me and kind of swimming out there. Um, yeah, and lucky enough to have uh, my good mates at Function use some of my photos for some of their marketing promotions. So that was one of the biggest accomplishments for me. Bang. Um Another thing that's got me really stoked on bodyboarding, and I don't want to say too much, but um, what I know is I've been having some really good conversations with someone I respect a great deal. Um, her name's Rio Clark. She's a, a beautiful female bodyboarder from Western Australia. We've known each other for a long time, and we're working on a, a bit of a project for a pretty spectacular kind of one-off women's bodyboarding event. Awesome. Um, it's not something I'm going to be taking credit for. You can't give any more detail than that at the moment? Um, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, Please um, tune in to further yeah. <laughs> close out um, podcast. Yeah, no, no, nothing's in concrete, but I think the, the momentum that we have and the ideas and I guess the business plan um, for this women's event um, is going to be pretty spectacular. Um, yeah, so... Again, what we're doing with the ABL is something completely different. Um, I'm a big fan of trying to do as much as I can for, you know, all kind of sides of the sport. What I'm sure you'll agree, and we've had lots of chats about it, about the best way to do it. I think this, at this moment in time, this is the best way to do it, yep. um, where we can give them an even playing field and also equal opportunity to, yeah, promote themselves and also, yeah, win some good prize money, which hopefully they can then put behind themselves to progress on a big scale. Just That's one other point just quickly as well at Nationals. The, the standard of uh, women's bodyboarding was fantastic. <sighs> that was unbelievable. Uh, and back-to-back -back, uh, WA women's yeah. champion. Absolutely. Um, watch this congratulations, space. Congratulations, Ebony. Yeah, watch this space. Ebony Shield. Yep. Um, in terms of what's got me down on bodyboarding – Fact that I just haven't been able to do it enough. Um, yeah, in, in, obviously. Oh, you and I are in the same boat. Yeah, yep. um, yeah pretty lucky to have recently started a, a, an amazing new job, which funnily enough is right on the beach. <laughs> um, I look out my office window every morning to one of the most spectacular oceanscapes you'll ever see, um, but it doesn't allow me to just sneak out to uh, go for a wave whenever I want. But um, yeah, apart from that, Mostly positive. Perfect. Yeah. Well, lads, thanks for joining me on this very special day, midlife crisis kind of point for me. So, I've got to ask you a question. Uh -oh, you're go. going through a midlife crisis. Yes. What sort of car are you going to buy? Um, <laughs> or is it going to be a motorbike? Mate, I just want my car back. My wife stole it. I haven't, oh, I haven't had my car for about six months. <laughs> the old Hilux. No deal. Yeah. yeah. I feel, I, I actually feel like privileged when she hands me the keys back and says, yeah, you can do what you want. <laughs> <laughs> we won't be like that, mate. We we will embrace you tonight and over the weekend. And as a <laughs> as your fortieth, and we watch your youth sail off into the sunset. So uh, sail off into Bass Strait. It's gonna yep. should we, have a good we, weekend, which is probably eight to ten foot at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, once again, big shout out to all of those that support the potty, Shano, Mark. All your brands. Uh, to Michael Jennings, Sam Watson, and Rob Porteous, uh, and also to everyone that's listening. Thank you very much. Tune in again next time. As Shano mentioned, we've got a bunch recorded up our sleeve, ready to go with plenty more to come. So stay tuned. Thanks again. Bye. Bye. Bye.